Sorry about that. Welcome to Be The Ram Global Fellowship. My name is Pastor Coach Anthony McKissick Sr. I'm the pastor of Be The Ram Global Fellowship. On behalf of my wife, Lady Leona McKissick, and my children, we welcome you. If this is your first time fellowshipping with us, I am glad. And I hope that it is not the last time that you fellowship with us. We like to start off our message with something very simple. We call it putting somebody in the game. Put me in the game, Coach. That's what everybody always asks. Why am I called Pastor Coach Anthony McKissick Sr.? Because I'm not just a pastor, but I'm also a coach, type of coach. Basketball, golf, cross country. I've done tennis. I've done football. I've done soccer. I've done pretty much everything. Not going to say I was great at it, but I did do it. I gave it a shot. And right now, what I want you to do is put somebody in the game. It's Super Bowl Sunday, so I want you to put two people in the game. How do I do that? I'm glad you asked. Well, you can share it on your Twitter, post it on your Facebook, make it your status. 
You can DM somebody and you can text somebody. Now, if you want to go all out and invite about four or five people, that's great too. You remember back in the day when you invited somebody to church, you had to, you know, go pick them up in the little church van or you had to, you know, give them directions and all of that. It's so much easier now. Only thing you have to do is share a message. That's simple, folks. Share it with two people. And in the meantime, listen to this BTR Total Body Affirmation. Hello, guys. This is Pastor Coach McKissick with your BTR Total Body Affirmation. I want you to repeat this every day when you wake up. This declaration is about speaking greatness and blessings over your life. You know, as well as I know, that when you wake up, the devil is busy. He's already whispering in your ear, but we're going to whisper back today. Look, repeat it after me. God, you are the head of my life. With all my heart, I will fight the good fight. With my feet, I will walk by faith and not by sight. With my mouth, I will speak life and not death. God, I promise to give you what's right and not what's left. God, you will provide the wisdom, the resources, and the discernment to allow me to be the ram when my opportunity comes. Amen, amen, and amen. You guys have a blessed day. Thank God that he has given you another opportunity. If you just did that, I promise you, you just start your day off the right way. God bless you. Now, what I want you to do is repeat that daily, not just today, every day. Make sure that you're doing it. And I'm interested, and we were like, that if you know the BTR Total Body Affirmation, send us a clip in so we can play it here. We appreciate you. We love you. Now, being that it's Super Bowl Sunday, I want to know who you're going for. Are you going for the Tampa Bay Bucks or the Kansas City Chiefs? Put it in the comment. Myself, I'm not a Chiefs fan and I'm not a Bucks fan. However, when you got Tom Brady on the team, He's pretty much the GOAT. It's hard to go against a proven winner. So I'm going to give my vote to Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's who I'm going for. I know I got a Falcons jersey on. It's wishful thinking that they'll make it to the Super Bowl one day again and win it. But in the meantime, I'm going to go with the Bucs. Let us pray. God, thank you for all those under the sound of my voice right now. Thank you for giving us peace in this moment, giving us peace in the middle of drama, peace in the middle of uncertainty. Thank you for cleansing our spirits and our hearts. Thank you for being with us. We ask that you would uh, come into this service. We'd ask that this fellowship magnify your name. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're going to do. And we thank you for what you did not do. We pray for all those who are under the sound of my voice who may be sick and shut in, maybe dealing with COVID, maybe dealing with, you know, mental issues, maybe having other health issues. Someone lost somebody and we, and we want to lift those up too. We pray for all of our members, those here, near and far. We pray for the married, we pray for the single, the mothers, the fathers, the grandparents, and even the kids. God, be with us in this service. Allow us to be distant but not disconnected. Allow someone to be closer to you as a result of this fellowship. God, we give you all of the glory, all of the honor. We praise your name. We thank you for, for keeping us. We thank you for keeping our family. We thank you that the accident was not us. We thank you that the sickness didn't come upon our body. We thank you that the cancer dried up. We thank you that the lives were saved. And we just thank you for giving us your son. In your mighty name, we pray, amen, amen, and amen. So we had two more members join the church. 
and they're down in Texas. I don't know what's happening in Texas right now, but something big is happening in Texas. And I just appreciate you all for sharing the message. I appreciate you all for letting me be in your living room. We are a young fellowship, but we are going to be powerful. And we're going to change the nation. Mark my word. On this day, on this Super Bowl Sunday, you heard it here first that we are going to change the nation. We're going to change our church is done. We are a church without walls. We don't judge. We have a no judgment zone, as a matter of fact. We want to win the 97%. And I hope you got your wristbands, your new members. Make sure you're wearing them. If you want to give them out and share them, I'll send you some more. And if, you want, if you're watching me right now, and I don't usually do this, but if you're watching right now and you want one of these wristbands, I'll send it to you free. Just send me a message. Hey, coach, I want a wristband. I want to represent Be The Ram Global Fellowship, and I will send it to you. I'll make sure that you get what you asked for. And now, got, got, I, I got something that you've been missing. There's a word from Lady Mac. You, I know you've been at, oh, where's she at? She's back. So y'all enjoy this moment. Hello, Be The Ram Global Fellowship family and friends. This is Lady Liana McKissick with a little moment for you. I feel like it's been a while since um, I've had a moment um, recorded, but just know that um, I have a quite a few of them that I'm ready to um, share with you all. So over the next few weeks, I'll be doing so um, with you know teaching and basketball season and running um, ministry and multiple businesses from home. Um, at times, you know, time gets away from you. But anyway, um, I am excited for how we have been growing over these past few weeks. Um, we have had new members. We have um, new viewers, some viewers for the um, first time every week. And so that's pretty exciting. Um, and I'm just grateful for uh, what God has in store for us. So this moment that I'm going to share with you. I'm gonna call it being the light. And I remember probably oh, years ago, maybe six or seven years ago, um, I remember I kinda had a, a situation um, that was sort of a negative situation but I chose to take the high road. Now I'm saying this is with lots and lots of practice and lots and lots of, you know, okay, like counting 10 or whatever the case may be. Um, I had a situation and I believe this was a time where I was um, coaching. And so there was a situation that was going on and I remember someone asked me, you know, well, why aren't you, like, retaliating? Like, why aren't you, like, going back and forth um, with this person about the situation? And so I said, well, I have people watching me. Um, I took on this position as being a coach so it's gonna it's important that I respond in the right way because people are watching um, and then there was another situation um, very similar I was no longer coaching um, just because at this point I was um, married and I had Amani so I wasn't coaching anymore but there was another situation that arrived. And in that situation, again, I chose to just um, be light because there was so much more that I could have lost had I, you know, replied or retaliated in this particular situation. So again, I took the high road and I thought I was gonna be the light because again, people are watching um, and I didn't want the people who I knew were looking up to me which in this point was my were my students 
um, and other members of the community, I just didn't want to throw them off. I didn't want them to um, be unsure about how they should respond to certain situations. And so I took my role as um, the example to just keep being the light. And so I kind of use that as my motto um, in life. Now I'm not saying that I'm always able to be the light um, because it's not always easy. But more recently I um, remember going back to work and it's really hard for teachers right now. Um, I know people are saying it's hard for students and it's hard for the parents and I get it because it is. Um, but it's really hard for us teachers right now. And so I find myself being challenged on being the light. Um, in addition to being a teacher, I'm also a leader in the building. Um, <clears throat> I'm a facilitator for a mentoring group that happens um, out of the school, as well as I'm the math department chair. So I have... Um, 12 other teachers who are kind of looking to me um, as a leader. <clears throat> and so it's been difficult to be the light. And I really struggled one day in particular and the encourager, if you will, needed some encouraging, right? I didn't feel so bright. I didn't feel like being the light. Um, because I'm like, I'm overwhelmed too. I'm tired too. But then I thought about the fact that every light has a source, right? That is connected to. Um, whether it's natural light or artificial light, there's always a source. So if I was going to be the light, even when I couldn't be the light or thought I could be the light, I had to remember that ultimately there's a source. And if I stay connected to the source, then it's nothing for me to be like. And so when I don't stay connected, right? When I, when I get disconnected and try to be the light on my own, that's where the overwhelming happens. That's where the, the weight is packing me down, right? But every light, has a source and I'm talking about the ultimate source so if you find yourself struggling in a dark situation where you're trying to figure out how are you going to be the light just stay connected to the source and when you feel disconnected just get reconnected well, how do we do that? We do that by praying, by worshiping, by just talking to God, having just having a conversation. So me and God, we talk a lot in my car because that's pretty much the only place where I'm alone um, until I pick up money from after school care. Other than that, I'm always surrounded by people. So anyway, <clears throat> talk to God. Um, listen to inspirational music, listen to your affirmations, pray, worship, um, have just have that time. And when you take that time, the thing is, in your weakness, he's strong. So when you're feeling kind of dim, when you're feeling kind of weak, just get back to the source. Every light has a source. And the source, ultimately, is how the light is able to be produced. It's okay not to be okay. When you feel a little dim, just 
just get back connected to the source. Now, I encourage you this week to be the light in a dark situation. Be the light in someone's situation. And if you can't be, that's okay. It simply means it's time for you to reconnect to your source. Have a great week. Thank you, Jesus. Great is your name. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart.
everybody clap those hands. Yeah. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your great name. Your great name, you say. We love to call your name. Call your name. It's something, It's something we cannot explain. We cannot explain. That 
It's now time for you to get the word from God. I'm not going to be before you long. This won't be a, a scream, shout, run around the church type of message. But I think this impartation is very important. Let us pray. God, please remove the frustration going on in my head right now. Please don't allow the environment and the atmosphere be a hindrance to the word that you place in my spirit. God, you know what you told me to speak about. God, our people are struggling. We're going through. We're hurt. And we want answers. God, I ask that you forgive me for my sins that I've done knowingly and unknowingly. Please don't allow me to be a distraction to myself. Remove all of the, the disturbances from around God. I, I, I cursed out the spirit of discouragement. I, 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 I cast out the spirit of not enough. I cast out the spirit of not going to be. And I just ask that you rain down in this virtual atmosphere. I ask that you be with us that you love on us, and that you give us what we came for. In your mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I hear the notifications going off. It's almost like the devil is afraid that this word is going to change somebody's life. The text that I'm going to be reading from today is St. Luke chapter 6, verses 33 through 35. It's very short, and I'm going to read it from the ERV and the Message Bible. I'm going to give you time to pull it up on your copy of the Word, whether it be a digital copy or the old school Bible. Either way, it's still good. Once again, that is Luke chapter 6, verses 33 through 35. 43 says, a good tree does not produce bad fruit, and a bad tree does not produce good fruit. Every tree is known by the kind of fruit it produces. You won't find figs on thorny weeds, and you can't pick grapes from thorn bushes. Good people have good things saved in their hearts. That's why they say good things. But those who are evil have hearts full of evil. And that's why they say evil things. What people say with their mouths comes from what fills their hearts. In the Message Bible, it says, You don't get wormy apples off a, war off a healthy tree, nor good apples off a deceased tree. The health of the apple tells the health of the tree. You must begin your own life giving lives. It, it's who you are, not what you say or do that counts. Your true being brims over into the true words and deeds. This is the word of God for the people of God. And would all God's people say amen. Amen and amen. Once again, this is Pastor Coach McKissick of Be The Ram Global Fellowship. The title of my message for the next few five minutes is pretty on point for me right now. It's focused, but frustrated. Focused, but frustrated. If you're sitting by somebody face to face, look at them and say, I'm focused but I'm still frustrated. You can put it as a status on Facebook. I'm focused, but I'm still frustrated. This text resonates with me because last week I have, in this last week, I have grown extremely frustrated. I've been focused, been focused on God, been focusing on winning the 97%, been doing what I need to do 
been focusing on winning my family, covering us. You know, there's been ups and downs. You know, wife had a situation, situation at work, situation here, situation there. I'm focused, but I'm frustrated. I I have to be transparent. I am frustrated. In this moment, even with God, I'm still frustrated. Uh, You may say, well, you're a pastor. You're not supposed to be frustrated. You're supposed to walk high and mighty. And no, it doesn't work that way. Oh, we're, we're 100 over here. We, we keep it trill. We keep it transparent and real. Trill. I'm focused. But I'm frustrated. Frustrated with basketball. We're not winning like we should be winning. There's opportunities that we miss. Frustrated at work. A lot of things going on. Co-workers fussing, ranting, and raving as coaches. We're fussing, ranting, and raving. I'm going to give you two scenarios to kind of, you know, encompass what we have here. So we're playing games here, and we're losing. We're a pretty good team. We're not great. We're not bad. We're good. You know, we're a three-tree team, three-tree team, and we're losing. And we'll put a good game plan together. We'll focus as coaches, and we'll get things together, and we'll go out. And, of course, if you know teenagers – They go and do the opposite of what we wrote down. And that frustrates us as coaches. So after the game, we scrapped the game plan. We we talked for hours and hours about what can we do to better prepare the athletes for the next game. On the education side, scenario number two. You have a kid who doesn't do their work. And a teacher who doesn't give them the grade because they did not earn a grade. So the teacher does what you should do. Give the kid a zero. Kid didn't come to class. Kid doesn't do the work. Kid should not get the grade. So when the kid gets a bad grade, kid goes and tells mom, I'm getting bad grades. Mom and dad goes to the school and says, why is my child getting bad grades? Teacher says, because your child didn't come to class. Parent says, why didn't you tell me my child isn't coming to class? So now teachers are at a risk for getting a bad evaluation. And now they have to do more work to justify why the child isn't passing. The child that did not come to class. Both of those scenarios have you frustrated. You're focused because you're doing the best that you can do. Pray for teachers. Pray for everybody in the education field. I promise you, they need it and we need it. But you're focused on doing the right thing. You're focused on doing what you're called to do. But you are frustrated because it's not working. But what we do is that we put so much focus on the symptoms. We glorify the symptoms but we ignore the source. We don't want to talk about the source. We only want to talk about the symptoms. Scenario number one, if the players would just make their free throws, turn the ball over less, and make layups, we'd probably be undefeated. See, the source of the frustration is that they're not making free throws. They're not taking care of the ball. And they're not making layups. But what we focus on is the loss. We focus on who we should have out there. In reality, it doesn't matter who's out there. If they're not making layups, free throws, and and, and they turn the ball over, we're going to lose every time. Scenario number two, the teachers, they fuss. They rant, they rave about what we got to do. We got to turn this in, turn that in. What At the end of the day, The symptom is the kid is failing. The parent is mad. The administration is mad. But the source of the issue is that the child won't go to class. But no one wants to say that. Why should someone else be held accountable for what the child does not want to do? Since when, in all of years of education, did you not know 
at some point from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. that your child should be getting some instruction from some educator. But once again, we glorify the symptoms instead of focusing in on the source. That brings me back to my text. An ERV says, a good tree does not produce bad fruit. And a bad tree does not produce good fruit. Every tree is known by the kind of fruit it produces. You won't find figs on thorny weeds and you can't pick grapes from thorn bushes. So we have to stop looking for something in an area that it, it will not be there. The issue isn't that the apple is rotten. The real issue is that the tree that the apple came from is rotten, and that's why it produces rotten fruit. So I'm going to give you three principles to understand when you are focused but frustrated. So please understand that what you say is a representation of what's in your heart, and what's in your heart is a, is a result of what you consume. And what you consume is a reflection of who you are. Let me say that again for the people who got a little bit distracted. What you say is a representation of what's in your heart. That's why we have our total body affirmation. What's in your heart is a result of what you consume. And what you consume is a reflection of who you are. I'm going to give you three principles to understand when you're focused and frustrated. Principle number one, what's in your heart determines what comes out your mouth. See, your words have power. What you affirm with your mouth becomes a reality. Your affirmations in reality are your fruit, and you will be known for what comes out your mouth. See, if you are affirming positive things and you are affirming the blessings of God, then you will be known as a blesser. You will be known as someone that people can go to if they need a good word. See, nobody's going to go to someone who's always negative and think that they're going to get something positive. See, messy people, they click up and they start hanging with each other. And if you want to, if, if you wonder why everybody around you is messy, then you may want to evaluate yourself. Your fruit is what represents you. What represents you? That's a real question. What represents you? What are you affirming on a daily basis? Do you say, God, you're the head of my life? With all my heart, I will fight the good fight. With my feet, I will walk by faith and not by sight. With my mouth, I will speak life and not death. God, I promise I'll give you what's right and not what's left. Do you say that? Or do you say, uh, if I don't see it, I, ain't, I don't believe it. I ain't walking nowhere until I see where I'm going. I, You know, I, I'm short this month, so I'm not going to give you anything. I'll give you what's left after I pay my bills. I'll give you what's left after I, I do my little thing thing over here. What are you affirming? What, what does your life story say about you? Do you speak life or do you bicker, complain, and moan? If you want to know what kind of person you are, ask three people that you see more than three times a week, and they'll tell you. And if everybody's saying the same thing, then they're probably not lying. Whether it be something positive or negative, you might want to believe what they say because everybody is not going to tell you the same lie. Principle number one, what's in your heart determines what comes out your mouth. Principle number two, what you consume determines the contents of your heart. So we understand what you are consuming is what determines what's in your heart evaluate what you allow in your heart and into your spirit. If you allow jealousy, strife, and everything else in your heart, then you will be filled up with jealousy. You will be a strifeful person. See, what the things you consume, what you watch, 
what you listen to, what did you let in your ear gates and your, and your eye gates. See, those things consume you and they fill you up. See, I began on January 1st, a 40 day, pretty much lifestyle change. And I realized that it's been 38 days and what I consumed was 10 times more important than what I did. Over the last five years, I've been on this journey to, to lose weight and get back fit and get back to my college days. And I wanted to be boom, bam, bow. I wanted to take my shirt off at the beach. All that good stuff. And I went uh, highs and I went on lows. I lost weight and I gained weight. I got a treadmill, an elliptical. Uh, when I did the green tea smoothie diet, 10 day smoothie cleanse, I did the Shanti size and insanity, and even sometimes did P90X. But no matter what happened, whenever I stopped working, it stopped working. Whenever I stopped working, and wasn't consistent, it stopped working. Now that I've changed my eating habits, I've lost more weight in the past 38 days than I did in the last five years. It came down to the simple fact, it did not matter how many weights I lifted, it didn't matter how many laps I ran. What changed was I started changing what I consumed. I'm happier, I'm alive, I'm woke more. Consistency is the key. What am I consuming? Now that is a physical consumption, but it comes the same way. If you want to change your frustration level, you have to guard yourself on what you are consuming. Some of you all are frustrated because you are taking on everyone else's problems. You are consuming things that are not a real factor in your life. So someone takes an issue that they're dealing with and they dump it on you and, and another person comes along and, and they get it off of their chest and put it on your chest. And another person comes along, your, your kids give you their issue, your spouse gives you their issue, your neighbor gives you their issue, your coworker gives you their issue, and your friends give you their issues because you're strong own. You're independent and you can fix everybody's problems. And see, now that they're better, you're worse because now you are trying to deal with their issues that they dumped off on you. So my body is adapting and trying to figure out, is this normal? Is this the new normal? Or are we going to go back to snacks all the time? We're going to go back to sodas. but I have to be consistent, even if I'm frustrated. You got to be consistent on what's proven to work in your life. Principle number one, what's in your heart determines what comes out your mouth. Principle number two, what you consume determines the contents of your heart. And my last principle, what you stand for determines what you will or what you will not consume. See, a tree, back to the text, it is firm and it doesn't move easily. A tree does not stand on its fruits. See, you may see that, oh, it has this fruit, it has that fruit, and this person is a great singer, or this person is a great actor, or this person is they're a great ball player, or a great artist. That's the fruits. But see, a person or a tree, it does not stand on its fruits. It stands on a trunk. And beneath that trunk are roots. If you don't see the root, you don't see the roots of the tree unless they come out the ground. But you really just see, the, you know, the trunk, you see the stem, you see the, the leaves and the branches. You don't always see the roots because the roots go underground and they gather all the things that are essential to nourish the tree. The roots are what allows things to enter the core. So your roots are planted in a certain area and your roots are what allows things to come up. What you stand on and what you stand for 
will let you know what you allow to come into your life. See, if you stand for a certain thing, you're not going to stand for that. So I'm not even going to entertain that conversation. I'm not going to entertain what's going on in your life because your issue is your answer, your issue, not mine. First of all, no, like the shirt said on the cover. So we're not even going to go there. See, the roots, once again, allows things to come into your life. But many of us are rooted in bad situations. We are attached by the roots to infidelity. We are attached to by the roots to jealousy. We are attached to uh, bad mannerisms. We are attached to stealing. We are attached to a negative lifestyle, a, a negative mindset because we are rooted in those things because that's how we grew up and that's how we do it here and that's how we will always do it here. That's how things are done. But I came to tell you today that you can change this. You have to decide what you're going to stand for. And you need to decide early because guess what? It's easy to pull up a plant. It's easy to put up a, a little bush, but it's hard to pull up a tree. It's going to be difficult to cut down a full grown, grown tree. So while you're, you're, you're uh, nourishing negativity, while you're, you're feeding all this negativeness and you're feeding all of these addictions in your life, it gets stronger and it gets stronger and it gets stronger. And that's uh, all of a sudden it has a hold over you and it becomes so hard to break. But you have to decide what you're going to stand for and what you're not going to stand for. See, I had to decide that I am no longer going to bring classwork home. I'm not going to grade papers at home. I'm not going to do this at home. I'm not going to do that at home. I'm no longer going to rob my family of my time so that I can pay time to my job. I am no longer going to play a player who can't who can but won't. So there's a difference. There's some who can't and there's some who won't. Those who can't, I'll teach them how to. But those who won't, they're making a conscious decision not to do what they're asked to do. And those are the guys that must be dis dismissed. But you have to decide what you're going to stand for. You know what? I am no longer going to be your girlfriend and we've been dating for 10 years. I am no longer going to be your, your sneaky link. I am no longer going to allow you to disrespect me. Even though you signed my check, you are not my source. You are a resource. You're being resourced out. See, Christ gave me the job. So I'm not going to be disrespected. I'm not going to be your puppet. Decide what you're going to stand for. And lastly, you have to understand that God will stretch you in order to elevate you. I said he will stretch you in order to elevate you. When you think about a tree, it will not survive if it does not have water. It must get its water from somewhere. If it's not raining, what if it's, you know, in a, a dry place? That doesn't mean all the trees are going to dry up. The leaves may dry up and they may fall down, but this tree stands firm because they have roots. And when the roots get down in the ground, it starts searching for water. It starts searching for nutrients and it's going to find it. It's going to find what it came to look for. And once it gets it, it brings it up into the tree and then the tree grows. And what way does a tree grow? A tree grows up towards the heavens. And that's how you're going to grow. You're going to elevate. But the more the tree elevates, the more the tree grows, the more water it needs. So the roots must do one thing in order to get what it needs. It must stretch out. So they, they stretch out. And that's what you have to do. You have to decide, you know what? I'm going to stretch out. I'm going to be in this position of surrender. And when you stretch your hands out to Christ, when you say, I am focused, but I'm frustrated, whether you lay out on the floor, whether you do whatever, that's when God will meet you where you are. See, I want you in your house, if you're listening, I want you to stretch your hands out. See, this is the position of surrender. 
And I want you to just speak to God in your own language. Let him know that you are frustrated. That you are sick and tired of being sick and tired. You want to do right, but you are tired of falling short. And let him speak to you. Keep your hands lifted and you stay connected to Christ while I pray you through. God, thank you for this moment. Thank you for what you're doing to our, in, our, in the lives of our people. We invite you in to into this space, into this community, God. We're lifting our hands up in obedience, God, and we're asking that you come into our hearts, that you nourish our moments, that you, that you protect our futures, and you guide us, God. Keep us, keep us strong. Keep our marriages together. Keep our friendships together, God. Touch places that no one has touched. God, heal our hearts. Heal our minds. Let us get over the unforgiveness, God. Bless us. Let us be a blessing to others. God, forgive us for, for sinning. Forgive us for disappointing you. Forgive us for, for not taking advantage of, of the gifts that you bestowed upon us, God. God, we love you. Even though we act like we don't. We love what you're doing for us. We love what you're doing through us. We ask that you, you embody us on a daily. You give us new insight, a fresh anointing, a fresh anointing, a fresh anointing, new wind blowing in our direction. And God, when the wind blows, allow it to blow over our face and blow the mess off, blow the unforgiveness off, blow the stress off, blow, blow the depression away. Blow away all those things that we don't need. Blow them away, God. Heal the sick. Dry up cancer. Cancer can be. The, they say there's no cure, but you are the cure. You're the cure. You're the cure to COVID. You're the cure to it all. Touch the person who's doubting you right now, who's asking, if you were real, then how did you allow this to happen? God, let them know that everything happens at your command. The devil has to get permission to even tempt us like he did with Job. So bless us, God. Heal us, strengthen us, and give us the, the strength to endure whatever you put on us this week. And we promise when we come out, we're going to give your name all of the glory and the honor. Amen, amen, amen. I'm glad you've been with us. I want to give you an opportunity if you don't know Christ and you want to get saved, don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till next week. You can do it right now. Just repeat this after me. God, I'm a sinner. I want to give my life over to you. I invite you into my heart. I believe that your son died on the cross. I believe that in three days later, he rose. And because he rose, our sins are covered in the blood of Christ. I believe that my only way to heaven is through your son. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. If you repeated that, I want to give you a little secret. You are saved. It's not going to be easy, but you are on the winning side now. I want you to tell somebody, tweet it out, text it out, tell your mom, tell your dad, tell your husband or wife, your brother or your sister, I just got saved and maybe you should too. I'm happy. Let me know. Comment. Let me know you got saved. It's a joy. There's a celebration going on in heaven right now because one sinner got saved and that one sinner is you. Now, if you want to give, I challenge you to go to be theram.com backslash giving or you can do it via cash app, BTR Global. I'll put it on the screen for you. I hope that you enjoy your Super Bowl Sunday. I pray that God increases your house, increases everything around you. Let it be gold. This is Pastor Coach McKissick with Be The Ram Global Fellowship. 
And until next time, I challenge you to win the 97% and be the ram in somebody's life. God loves you and so do I. I'm out.